Hey guys, Dr. Red here, and welcome to Apollo 4X. Apollo 4X is an indie Space 4X game that just got released on Steam uh, for about $20 by DigiEnt, a small in indie company. The game is actually extremely different in comparison to other 4X space games. For one, you start off uh, kind of like a Venice-like planet state rather than the usual uh, galact galactic empire type of game. And what that means is basically trade is the name of the game as you colonize worlds that produce cheap resources and then you set up corporations to buy those resources for a profit. Trade routes can be extremely complicated later on, but if you're able to master that, you'll do really well in this game. You'll make so much money and then you'll just buy all the resources and wreck face and that's pretty fun. Uh, basically with that money used to buy special resources which are used for example to colonize new worlds, deal with large enemy empires, so if, if you have any uh, knowledge of history, just imagine you're Venice and you're surrounded by like Austria and the Ottoman Empire has been in space and they got giant like man-eating dragons that just kill all your people, so yeah that, that's definitely a challenge. And furthermore, you also got balanced domestic happiness being the leader of a planet state. Um, there's multiple factions uh, that have domestic demands at each turn. If you don't fulfill enough demands and your approval drops low enough, you may be ousted by a coup, which entails a game over essentially. Uh, finally, Apollo 4X offers a very unique ground combat system. Each of your units um, are basically cards and they have an attack, defense, and morale stat uh, based on the uh, the tactic that you use with each card. Um, it's a little bit hard to illustrate uh, with words, but I will uh, in the preview show you what the ground combat looks like so you can take a look yourself and see if you uh, if you would enjoy the ground combat in the game. It's beautifully illustrated. It has kind of a, I don't know, it kind of has like an old school 90s DOS look, but it, it it's, it's done really really well like the the art is really um, beautiful in, in the ground combat at least I think so uh, overall Apollo 4x was a really enjoyable game the only downsides were mainly some UI difficulties um, that hopefully will get patched out in the future and the current lack of multiplayer uh, when you see the game you, you can definitely see it has some um, board game potential influences and that this game could you know hopefully in the future have multiplayer added because I, I really think that would be a great addition. In addition, there's actually no tutorial in the game, but there is a really really nice manual. So if you're from the old days, you know back in the 90s, uh, 90s gaming, 80s gaming, there weren't any tutorials. You read the manual and you figured it out. And the manual is actually really well um, detailed and it explains everything you need to know to get the game running and get the game playing. But if you don't have the patience for that. Uh, this game might be a little bit of, a little bit difficult to figure out because there isn't a tutorial. Uh, nonetheless, once you get past that, once you you know actually do figure out the game, I've got plenty of hours of fun out of it, and I think you will too if you're a fan of Space 4X games, especially a game that's honestly completely different from all of those other you know Master Ryan, Master Ryan 2. Uh, type games that we, you've most likely seen that have been released in Steam in the uh, in the near past. Overall, I give the game an 8 out of 10 and I'm going to show you a little bit of, you know, how to set up a trade through, get your, get your uh, first colonization efforts running and then at the end I'll show you a little bit of ground combat, so stay tuned. Alright, so these are the sayings that you get at the start of the game, or I should say before you start the game. You could change the starting resources to have, say, a popular and poor a poor empire where everyone loves you, but they start with uh, very little money, or the opposite, rich and hated, or if you want an easier game, you can be popular and rich. Uh, this setting changes the, the setting of the enemies. They could be really bad enemies in the sense that they suck at being enemies. They could be very large enemies, but uh, they're they're very they're starting to be very weak, or they could be very small enemies, but very very aggressive and very very strong, or they could just be the standard enemies. And then these um, say it just affects say like your the political difficulty, which is how easy it is um, to maintain approval, how easy it is to fill the domestic demands, plan quality effects. 
I mean, okay, so these, these are a little bit uh, descriptive based on the name. Um, obviously, how, how easy it is to colonize these new planets and then develop them. Tougher planets, such as Class F planets, uh, cost exponentially more resources to develop into a usable level, while, you know, having a bunch of Class A planets, you just spend a few resources and then you'll get a crap ton of investment. And then economic difficulty, basically, is a little bit setting for the overall game of how much money you'll be making uh, while trading. And these are the four types of enemies that there are. Lieber, uh, basically, what they're doing, they're, very, they're kind of the traditional balanced type of army. They'll match your type of army. Uh, they're very strong on the offense, but they're able to have a pick a very strong defense as well as some of their actions. Orcus has uh, very high morale, and morale affects whether your unit's route or the enemy unit's route. And they also have a bunch of damage over time abilities, so they're kind of like, you know, they're not like the type of enemy that'll just straight up kill you, but you'll just get slowly poisoned, you get slowly whittled down, and then you die or run away. Um, Holy Heavy of Jonas represents crazy ass cultists. They have really high morale and really high attack. Just imagine a bunch of screaming banshees, you know, or something like that charging at you. That's what the Holy Haven of Jonas is. And then Minerva are kind of like cybernetic enemies. Um, they, they do a bunch of attrition based damage as well. Uh, they also heal a lot, so basically they want a very slow fight. But they're also able to make extremely strong decisive strikes. Uh, one of their abilities is to stack flanking debuffs on your units, and then uh, one of their units has gains a significant amount of attack based on how many flanking charges are on your units, and then they just hit you and whack you in, and you die. And then number of planets, uh, so you have four enemies, I'll raise it to 88, 65 I think was the default that was left at, but we'll just leave it at 88 so we ha because I don't know, it just feels like a nice even round number. So with that said, let's get started. All right, the first thing that happens is here's Apollo, and then see this is why I say the UI could be a little bit difficult. But that's alright. Just need to zoom out and zoom in buttons. And uh, the first thing we could do is, or we need to do, is colonize three planets, but also to um, see if we want to reroll the galaxy. I think I'll just keep this galaxy. It looks alright. There's a nice class A planet, and then there are some crappy class D plans that might be a bit difficult to uh, deal with later on. If you right click you can move around the map. You can see these red plants are where the enemies are. So this is the Jonas homeworld. If you don't deal with them they'll start conquering new planets and the rate of conquering will accelerate. There's also wormholes which uh, once you ally with, with a certain city state you'll be able to go through these wormholes and plan trade routes through these wormholes and that's always very nice. Um, this is probably one enemy to the northeast of us, one to the northwest. I just want to find all of the enemies. One to the southwest, and they only start with one planet each right now. That's not too bad. And then must be another enemy somewhere else, maybe a bit further away, maybe uh, on the east side somewhere. Oh yeah, right here. I'm not gonna worry about those guys too much. I gotta get my empire started. Okay, there, there we go. Back to our home world. So which plants do we want to colonize? Uh, the, these little red markers determine what these planets sell and the price that they sell it at. Obviously we want to claim this class A planet because um, yeah, it's pretty awesome and okay there we go. It's pretty awesome and produces at least one cheap resource. So let's grab this and we can pick some names. We'll call it Marshall. Alright, so now we want to think where else we want to claim. Um, we don't want to have planets that are really far away for our trade routes because what will happen is um, each planet has fleets on them and then I have to build more fleets. And to build more fleets I need to build cities on them and cities take a lot of resources and the class uh, deter the class of the planet determines how easy it is to build new cities, how many resources it will take. So this class C planet is alright. I kind of want to grab this class A and this class B, although right at the start it might be a little bit difficult. But I think this is definitely the right direction we want to go. We want to go towards um, more plants, not this way, and besides these plants kind of suck back there. And these are also unexplored plants, you just imagine that they don't exist, but once you ally with a certain city stage you'll be able to 
quote unquote explore these planets and then uh, figure out if it's a nice planet, if it has great resources that you want. Yeah, I think I'm going to take these three planets. I think I'll make, um, we'll make up for the extra distance pretty fast after we get a nice trade route set up and we get the money we we want to um, we'll be able to buy more services anyways so these are the services I'm gonna hide the tips there's five types of services just imagine this special resources guns or weapons are used to buy more soldiers from this tab these are the five basic types of soldiers you get there's also Praetorians which are good for killing enemy leader units and then militias which you just summon to uh, defend yourselves as an emergency. Spaceships are used to make more caravans. Instruction infrastructure is used to uh, build cities and stuff on your planets. Uh, administration is to colonize new planets and then market services are used to expand the market. And it's actually really important to expand the market because um, if you don't expand the market you get these like same crappy uh, maximum values at the each end of each turn. Every time you click these buttons there's a chance uh, what you can buy will decrease. So obviously you really want to expand the market so in the future these values will go up and you'll get more resources for your money in the long run. And I think we'll buy once more. We just want to expand this twice. I think that's a good early start. We got a little lucky it didn't go down the first round. Uh, here represents the, the colonial demands. Every time I don't answer one of these colonial demands I lose minus one approval. I have 20 approval right here. Every time I do answer one I get plus one approval. So I, if I fulfill two of these demands, I get plus two approval and then minus two for not uh, doing the other ones. So I would have a change of zero at the end of each turn. These are my, say like, bonus objectives. And by fulfilling each bonus objective, I'll gain one clout each turn. I also believe you gain 10 base clout. Clout's used to uh, make various decisions or use your abilities that you gain from your city state. And this is the Vault of Apollo. You can stick 10 monies in and then you'll gain 3 monies each turn for a total, for 5 turns for a total of 15. So you make 5 monies overall for investing in here. Not a bad choice, if, you know, if you have extra money at the end of the turn, you'll get it back uh, really soon. So what we'll do now is, before that, and this is the Victory Tractor, this is what we need to uh, ultimately win. Alright, so we go to our... Um, Planet, we can recruit some city states, um, and each of them have some s special abilities. For example, Nova Roma allows you to pillage a planet after you conquered it, but then you won't to gain some money, but you won't be able to use that planet in the future. Or recruit Praetorians, which are necessary against late leaders. And there's quite a lot of factions, but the one I recommend starting in the beginning, if you, especially if you don't have any enemies is the oligarch dynasty because you'll get 30 free capital each turn and you'll be able to re-roll your corporations or remove a corporation from a colony and I'll talk about that later but those could be potentially very important and yeah, I'll, I'll keep it open for a few seconds if you want to pause you can read this and the next thing I'll take is uh, let's see there's another one that gives you like a small amount of of usefulness. I actually should have grabbed this first. Oops. Because this one makes future city states uh, cheaper and then gain capital for having approval. That's pretty useful. But since I didn't get that now. Alright, well, I'll grab it anyways. I, I should have I should have done the other way around, but that's alright. That's for you know anyone who wants to follow the strategy in the future. Alright, so now it's time for um to determine what kind of corporations we want. So each planet can hold up to two corporations and then randomly each turn, uh, you don't know which one, the corporations will buy either, uh, based on these choices, it'll buy either labor or like, like these fancy precious metals or something like that. So let's see, this planet sells metals and then we probably want to make like a very triangular route. We'll start all of our routes from Apollo and then like just make a triangle or then make like a little square and go back to Apollo. Um, we probably want to put something that buys this little gold here. But if we put this corporation here, it could buy DNA or um, 
or these little um, S signs, whatever, I, I forgot what they're called. Basically, it means that no matter what this corporation buys each turn, I'll be able to sell them something. So that sounds like a, a great thing to stick on this planet. And you see, this turn they're buying this resource for 22, I could buy it from here for 4, so perfect. That's exactly what I want. Uh, now we have some planet and DNA. I think I want to stick that here because if I want to make it into a triangle like this, I could also go this way hypothetically. Um, uh, depends on the situation, but since we're already set up kind of to make it this way, we'll, we'll just follow it this way. I want to stick planets and DNA on here. Perfect. And I can also stick DNA and culture here as well, unless I want to put this somewhere else. Now I'll probably end up putting DNA and culture here. Perfect. So I'll be able to sell any any of these resources back to this planet and now help help out later on in the game. Now this planet sells labor, minerals, and fancier minerals. So all of these have labor on them. Let's use one of these since uh, if we use this, then we'll have two of these left in. Uh, we might not roll something that we want. Let's stick this here. And that makes perfect sense. And then... M minerals and... Hmm. I don't really want the culture ones. Those aren't the most useful, unfortunately, if we're going this way. DNA and minerals. Hmm. Be a little tough but that's all right i mean you don't have to make the most ideal perfect round sometimes you'll get a little unlucky sometimes you'll get really lucky which is always nice i think i will take the people and minerals and stick it here and hopefully i wrote something useful and it doesn't look like i i did unfortunately now i don't want to really spend 15 clout just on perfecting this planet i can always remove the corporation later but for now, okay, it's already buying minerals, I, I, or it's the special minerals, so I feel like that's always going to be a nice resource to have. I'm pretty sure it was the special minerals and DNA is what I put on this planet. So we'll see if we can get lucky and stick another one of these on. And yeah, we, we will get lucky for this turn of uh, making fleets. Now we want to, let's close this tap, we want to build a few starships. We'll need that so we can start a caravan. Let's... Let me show you how starting a caravan works. So I want to purchase a caravan. Um, the basic caravans only have two slots for resources. And then I want to go to this planet, uh, travel. And then what I want to do now is, with my money, I'm going to buy two units of these minerals. And as you can see, even though I could buy DNA, this turn they're not buying the, uh, these corporations are not buying DNA, so I would not be able to sell them. I trade, and you see it takes three distance to get to this planet. Originally, there was four fleets available here, or or fuel if it you know helps you to understand what's going on. And now there's one left, so I use three. Let's go to this planet. Sell these minerals now, and now I'll be able to buy minerals and buy these special minerals. Let's go here. Travel. Sell this. And now, uh, you think I'd be able to go here, but th the destination wouldn't have enough fleet, unfortunately, at this turn to be able to co to complete this round. Remember, the destination is is the number. The, the destination's amount of, of fuel or fleet is what you care about. So I'll, I'll have to end this trade route and send it to Apollo. Apollo has uh, basically infinite amount of... Uh, not infinite, but has quite a large amount of fleet possible based on your resources. So, um, Apollo is always going to be a nice place to send home as long as you have enough of these. What well, the next thing we want to do is buy some infrastructure. Uh, probably not anymore past this. And now we want to build cities. And the more cities we have, the more fleet we can purchase. This land is obviously going to be really important since. It's not only going to be a destination for Apollo, it could also potentially be a destination of one of these worlds as well, and potentially future worlds. So we want a bunch of cities. Luckily, this is our Class A planet. It's going to, it's going to be the cornerstone of our empire. 
We want four cities here. Four cities can uh, produce up to eight fleet. That should be enough. And then I'll still have some change to say, um, you know, up upgrade one of these. Upgrading these has a chance to lower the sell cost later, and then upgrading these has a chance to increase the buy cost. And note that these, all of these, except for Ada City, take up these little points, and each city generates one of these production points per turn. And then we'll also want to build a few cities on all of these planets. Probably two on all of these planets. This planet, we can also build a lot of cities and then build stellar nets, which basically just gain you clout, which are, once again, just help you um, gain abilities later on, or you are used for abilities later on. Let's build four of them here. And then later, like I said, we can purchase some stellar nets. Now, there are some cheap resources right now that I could take advantage of. Uh, spaceships, I could buy one more. And colonies. We also want to know what do we want for these domestic agendas. Which ones do we want to complete? Probably the spaceship one and then this gun one. The other two are a bit expensive uh, for the start. And I have zero approval because I used that to buy, buy some city-states, so to say. Um, so we need a few more weapons. Uh, 23. I could use all my weapons now because I'm, I'm not close to any enemies. And then I would have a net gain of 2 approval because I complete 3 missions and uh, fail 1 mission. That's not too bad. Yeah, this is a bit expensive right now for the start. Alright. So let's complete these 3 missions. We'll have two approval now for the future turns. And then we'll invest the rest of our money into the Vault of Apollo. And we'll get this money back in the future. We'll leave a little bit of money though so I can, of course, set up a trade route in the future. Um, I think this is fine. I'll have 55 money at the end of the next turn. Um, that should be enough to set up any trade route that I care about. So with that said, let's end our first turn. There. Yay, next turn. Alright, a little redundant, but you know what? That's alright. Just to make sure that the AIs complete all their tax tasks. So now you can see we have four production points to spend. We want to build possibly seven fleet. That should be enough. I might need eight to get from here to here. I haven't... I'm not sure yet. We'll save one just in case. And then here, of course, we want to use our, our production points for fleets. And then here... Uh, we'll still need two fleets, or sorry, uh, four fleets, so two production points worth of fleets. And then I can build stellar nets now, so I can start generating clout for the future. Or, yeah, and get some clout, that'd be pretty nice. Alright, and then let's take a look at our missions. This turn we have four missions once again. Sometimes we you can have more than four missions. Um, luckily though, all of these are very, very cheap. And as you can see, by upgrading our market, uh, we didn't get lucky on some things, including infrastructure. But for spaceships, now we're able to get up to 15, which is pretty good. Let's see if we can get a little bit lucky by rolling these. Okay, well, it'll be a little close. Hey, let's set up the trade route first before I run out of money purchasing extraneous things. But we also might want to set up a new plant, so let's consider that since I do have the... Uh, the resources available should I choose to do so. Here's a nice planet for me to, to claim. This class F plan is very hard to develop, but it does sell resources for extremely cheap. Um, but I'm looking more towards maybe a class. Like, let's, let's just look around anywhere near us. Some of these resources are a bit expensive. And this turn we wouldn't be able to develop this planet that much because if our infrastructure isn't too... Um, we're not getting that much of that. But I think this plan is actually okay. Just how cheap it is will be making a lot. Although, uh, maybe for the short term this planet might be a bit better. Take a look at the resources. Um, that would be would be um, sold. These two basically sell the same thing, except for this one sells DNA, while this one sells precious metals. Hmm. It's a tough decision, but I, I think 
the small amount of money difference isn't going to add up enough for the for the development cost for a bit. So we'll just colonize this planet. I mean, even if I colonize it and don't use it, uh, the only bad thing it does increase the price of future colonies. But but I mean, even if I don't use it, it's not going to hurt me, so to say. So it's not too bad to colonize more planets. Let's grab. I'm hesitant, but let's grab this planet. This... Yeah, okay, let's just do it. Call it Luxembourg. Alright, and then we still have to build a few of these for the future. So let's make sure we have that. And what we want on this planet is... Okay, this is exactly what I want. People and... Uh, culture and one thing to notice is that even if if you're if this planet is selling the same resource so you see it's selling labor and it's buying labor you can uh, sometimes this will be at a profit you can never sell the same resource to the same planet what you buy from a planet has to always go to another planet uh, just imagine that labor or culture is a very generic term and that each planet isn't selling the same type of culture or labor uh, so, so when you go to a different plant, they're buying a different plant's worth of culture or labor that that plant specifically needs. If that makes any sense, this plant uh, was um, is going by people and culture. Let's see if we can get a DNA buyer here. Maybe not. Besides this one, this one's all right. It produces minerals, which I don't know if I want. Um. Maybe I'll grab this people and minerals, but or sorry, culture of minerals or precious minerals. Blah. Nah, I think I'll take the DNA. Even if I roam minerals, maybe I could bring it from another planet. We'll see. Let's build a new convoy. Once again, we travel here, and let's see what these guys are buying. Okay, gr er. Yeah, buying. These guys want minerals, two of them. So we got lucky here again. Let's trade. Go here. Travel. Sell these. And then on to the next planet. Perfect. They want this. But I might not sell the minerals here. I, I could sell this minerals here. Let's consider that. Actually, maybe I'll even skip this planet. We'll, we'll see. Let's, let's take a look. We go back. Once again, we do want to sell these. Oh, I can't buy culture here uh, on this land, so I do want to stop by this land regardless. I, I just wanted to check. Travel here. And then buy some culture. Actually, let's, let's go back. I, I don't want to sell the minerals. I just want to sell the people. Buy culture. Yes. And then move here, travel, sell this, and let's see if I can bring anything back here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any DNA. I could travel back here. No, I can't because there's not not enough fleet, unfortunately. So hmm, I could do something else. I could sell the minerals here. If I sell the minerals here uh, and then I bought DNA, I would make a $19 profit and lose $12 from not being able to sell here. So that would be a net profit for me. Let's sell this uh, these minerals here then and buy culture and buy DNA. Go here. Do that. And then... Oh, no, I can't even make that trade. It's too far away. Okay, so... Uh, screw that. That's all right. Go back. Okay. Back here. Oh, blah. Uh, sell the people and then buy culture. Travel. Go here. Sell all this and then we just head back to Apollo. Yep. Perfect. 
Awesome. So that's how we made $53 from that trade. What can we use to, what can we buy? Even if I don't need these resources now, when it's cheap, it's nice to stock up. I think I will upgrade the market once though. Unless there's something that demands it. Oh, I actually have five missions. I should have scrolled down. Okay. Um, this mission we won't be able to accept. It costs way too much. But the other four look pretty cheap. Although construction, maybe not as well because we're not... We're not being offered very good rates for our money. Anyways, I will upgrade the market though. Buy all of these since we have the money to do so. And military will need in the future anyways. So which missions do we want to do? We want to do this mission obviously. We want to do this mission as well. This mission is cheap too. And I think I won't do... I won't do the construction mission because I, I need I need some construction to upgrade this planet. Especially since it's only a class C planet. So I can see it costs way more to upgrade these planets. Add two cities and that should be it. I don't need to upgrade it too much past that for now. I do have some spare construction. Let's get another stellar net. Having clout is always nice. And maybe another city here. And then another city here. Alright. So this is basically how the early game works. You just try to design the best trade route as you can. And we want to reach our victory condition of uh, either getting 16 more colonies or killing all of the enemy mother uh, homeworlds or adding 300 of each of these resources. So the game can go pretty fast. These games aren't supposed to last like 20 hours each, but there's definitely a high amount of replayability. Uh, we started off by luck uh, in a probably more peaceful system. All of our enemies are kind of far away. We'll end our turn. We'll play one more turn and then I'll go to another campaign that I have just to show you a little bit of ground combat and how it works. So let's take a look at our domestic agenda again. There's uh, five current current colonial demands, and looks like there's two that we want to do for sure, and then maybe one that's a maybe. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, the first thing we okay, we have enough spaceships. That's good, and then infrastructure is very cheap right now. So this turn we probably want to develop our infrastructure, and maybe we want to colonize another planet. Grab some more of this. Last F planets. Hmm. I wouldn't mind going around. Yeah, going around like this way back to Apollo. Let's grab 50. We, we could call a nice two planets then. Oh, there's Samuel Sun and then. Colonize this planet, Von Weiser. Let's take a look at these. Um, how do we want to set up a trade route to these planets? I, like I said, still want to go around this way. Since that's how I've set it up. The corporations, we want to get something that has culture and people. Or any precious metals. These sound like the ones I want. Now I have to be a little careful. I don't want them both to roll culture or I don't want both to roll, you know, the same resources because I can only buy one resource from here. We could look two away as well. So there are a bunch of culture and people resources. Um, maybe I want to diversify a little bit. Oh, no, I think I put a culture and precious metals here. So I want to diversify with a culture and, and people here that just in case, you know, there's some, an oversupply. Or under supply. And then here we want precious metals, DNA, or minerals, and then possibly more people, more minerals, or culture. So I'm basically covering every single resource here, but uh, as a priority, we want the what the one immediately before. So minerals or DNA. None of these sell DNA, unfortunately. Uh, minerals or culture. None of these are very good. I think I'm going to try to use a reroll and see if I get lucky. It does take 15 of my clout. 
But I do want a strong... I want strong plants on all these places. And I see mineral and DNA. So we, we got some lucky rerolls. And then... Maybe I have precious metals. And I guess precious metals and minerals is alright. The precious metals and DNA is fine as well. Um, hmm. Not actually sure which one. It's both about the same. Fortunately, this plant doesn't produce either of these besides the precious metals so there's really no difference between the minerals and the DNA I guess we could look at one step even further back and I guess I'll just go with precious metals and DNA then okay so now we want to start a new caravan oh wait before I do that I'm gonna get a bunch of errors. First, I need to build fleets at all these planets, of course. Eight should be plenty. Of, actually, I might do ten in case there's we have a bridge route. And then we'll use the rest of our points to add stellar nets. And um, we accomplish a goal, so the next uh, of having enough stellar nets, the next goal will be six. This does improve our passive clout generation, which is very, very important, of course. All right, get some more fleets here. And this should be enough fleets, so we'll use our other construction unit to build another stellar net. See if we can get to the next level of upgrades. And you can build as many stellar nets as there are cities in each planet. And there we go, we reached the next go of six, and the go after that would be 12. And our fleet, we don't need to add any more cities on this place because it would be very, very difficult or very expensive. These plants already have some fleets that they started out with. Now we can start a new caravan. Let's go here, travel. This planet is taking DNA and people. Unfortunately, I only have DNA, so I just buy this. See, do I want to hoard these precious metals for later on? No, not really. They're actually, yeah, maybe because they're only two dollars here. So let's do that. Let's travel here. Do that. And what else can this place buy? Minerals. Go here. Travel. Sell this. And then everything's very cheap on this planet this turn. That's that's good. Buy some culture and buy some DNA. Travel. Go here. Oh, whoops. I need to actually buy some things. Uh, what do I want to buy? Culture and people. So we got really, really lucky this turn. All of our cheap resources are the ones that are being sold. And then we, we got extremely lucky. Everything's perfectly matched in this turn. So this is going to be a very strong monetary turn. Sometimes we'll get very unlucky. And then that's where the hard part comes. How to set, set up an awesome trade route. When your plants aren't, you know, all matching up uh, as awesome as possible. Okay, I forgot to. Oops, gotta buy some resources here because I was talking, jabbering away. Yeah, you, you can see we got extremely lucky here. And now, do we want to go back here? Let's see, DNA and uh, culture. Yeah, I guess we could. We can make a small amount more money. We can even go for another bout, possible. No, I don't have any more uh, places. We we met the man on every single planet except for the people here, and it's a little culture here. But that's perfectly all right. And now we go back to Apollo, execute for a hundred and forty-one dollars, which is quite a bit of moolah. Might try to invest this turn to upgrade the market once more. Th this is a very long-term investment that will definitely pay out once we start reaching some enemies. Uh, let's buy as much of this cheap stuff as we can. Because we'll need it in the long run anyways. Um, I still don't need any, gun any guns for weaponization yet. For any soldiers because I haven't reached these guys just yet. That's perfectly fine. 
But uh, the, if, if you let them just expand passively, they'll start expanding much, much faster. That's, that's never a good thing. Let's take a look at which missions we want to complete. Uh, this one seems pretty simple. And this one. Unfortunately, a bunch of these missions are very expensive. I don't know if I want to complete too many of them. I do want to... Is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven missions. Okay, the more colonies you have, I do believe there's more missions that you might get. So that could be one downside of having too many planets. Um, I guess we did the weapons one since we have plenty of weapons to spare. Even though this is expensive, we do have plenty of infrastructure as well. Uh, I would have to spend twenty dollars for this mission, but basically every time you do one of these, it's even though, like I said, doing it gets you one and not doing it is, is minus one. It's basically a swing of two approvals. So you gotta think now in terms like that. Since we do have a lot of money and we do still have a bunch of money invested, no, no, I don't think it's worth it. We'll get one approval overall. It's okay. We can invest some more money into the bank here. Oh, next go at 15 capital. Alright, perfect. I think I can invest one more and still be alright. 36. Yeah, I got plenty of fleets left, so it's not like I need too much money. And these resources are pretty cheap. I can probably invest everything and still be okay in the next turn, to be honest. I think I will do that. Make 45 monies and that'd be enough to buy anything from this plan that I would like. Uh, so next we want to do is upgrade a few planets with our construction resources. We need to upgrade these planets, of course. At least twice, so let's do that. That's the bare minimum. This planet we can upgrade a Crap Tud, because it's another Class A planet. Uh, is it still cheaper here? Yeah, it's still cheaper here. So you can see, even the difference in a Class A and a Class B planet is exponential in their cost. Um, basically, like, B planets, they cost 2 for the first city and then 4, and so it, it increases by 2. Class C planets start at 3, increase by C, etc, etc. So I think that'll be it for uh, this little preview. What, what's next is I'm going to show you a different campaign that I played uh, to test out the game and just show you how ground combat works. So I'll be right back. Alright, so you can see this campaign. I started off um, here as Apollo, and then I just snaked my way towards the Lieber home, which are the generic enemies that you'll face. They fight in a very balanced style. If you take over their home world, basically, basically that's one of the victory conditions to win, is to take all of the enemy home worlds. But, um... The home world, you actually have to win multiple battles in a row based on how strong, how many planets that the uh, the faction has in total. And that can be kind of annoying since these guys actually have quite a few planets. And just for, you know, as an example, I'll go take over one of these small planets. As you can see, it costs six spaceships to transport my army there. And this is my army. I believe you can deploy up to 10 soldiers at a time, but I do have backups for future missions or future battles in case it takes more than one. So we'll invade and actually I only need one battle to win. Uh, these are the types of enemies that are going to be present. Only six and I can deploy up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I can deploy up to nine uh, slots. The Libra Champion, unfortunately, is a little bugged right now, so uh, how champions work is that they have a random, they have a certain amount, of, or an infinite amount of HP, but if I do more attack than they do defense, the difference is I roll, the difference between the attack and defense value, I have to roll a dice between 1 and 10, and my number has to be smaller than that, so you can imagine champions are really difficult to kill. Unfortunately, they are a little bugged right now in the game. Um, that's something I've actually personally talked to developers with, and they are definitely going to fix that as soon as they can. Horde bands are kind of like your typical assault soldiers, and then uh, Kaiju are kind of a support unit. They can intercept your units, they can um, 
they can lower your morale, etc., etc. But I'm going to uh, deploy a bunch of stellar marines, at least five of them. They're kind of your grunt fo foot soldiers, and they're kind of important. And then one shield and signs, they're kind of like your, your medic unit. They heal you, they provide shields. Space support is... Um, your unit that does like true damage from space, whether their attacks ignores defense or they can disorient a unit, and a unit that's disoriented has zero on every stat. So, and they're very easy to defeat after that. Mech suits are like your flanking units. Right now, I think they're a little bit, um, in, are a little bit weak right now. So I'm not gonna, I'll deploy one just to show you what it's like. But basically, they also require charges, and when they don't have any charges, they have to, uh, you guess to charge up. And that's a turn where they're not doing anything, and that's actually, that actually makes a big difference. But as you can see, we outnumber them quite a bit. So as you can see here, um, there's blue lines and red lines on each each unit. Blue lines, and it, it, it'll change at the end of every single turn. Blue lines determine how many attacks I'm going to make, so and how many times I have to defend, of course. Uh, basically, it says my missile recon is in combat with this horde band and this horde band, and then the red lines determine what other allies are in combat uh, with the same unit. So this stellar marine's also in in combat with the, this horde band, and then uh, this battle satellite's also in combat with this horde band. Invincibil uh, invincibility means that. These horde bands will have plus two defense. It doesn't show yet because I don't know what tactics they're using. I I won't find out what tactics they're using until I attack them. Uh, sovereignty means they have plus two morale, and then uh, what's it called? There's another one. I forgot what it's called, but it'll give them guess what? Plus two attack. Uh, morale basically determines the chance you'll route. Um, every time you match up, you compare all the stats. Right, if your attack's bigger than the defense, you deal damage, and vice versa. And then morale is either a yes or a no option. If you have more morale, you gain morale. If you have less morale, you lose morale. And then um, if your morale, let, let's say I have like plus 10 morale and then one of the enemies has only 8 HP left, right? That unit would rout. And then I'd be left with 2 morale. So basically morale, morale you can consider as like a soft counter to damage that is going to be really useful because uh, you're more likely to kill a bunch of enemies, or sorry, you're more likely to rout a bunch of enemies than killing a, a crap ton of enemies. Every time you kill an enemy though, you also will gain three morale and vice versa if you lose an enemy. Uh, battle style like you actually have to assign who you want to attack. Um, I think I'll actually pick one of these invincibility units because battle sides can do true damage. And you can tell that earthlings might not be as good as is your regular soldiers, but that's alright. Um, with proper tactics, you will be able to beat them. Let's start with our missile recon, so we can pick between three different tactics. I haven't unlocked a faction that allows me to increase my defense or attack, which is what the the sieve and the blitz do. But I have unlocked the flash the faction that allows me to spend uh, clout to add flank counters to the enemy deal for true damage or to disorganize which would make them have zero uh, have have them have zero of every single stat also there's a cost for using each action some of these will hurt me as well based and you can see that right here um, so what I'll do is I'll just choose one target just to see what they are and then do four HP damage to them or I could do this and gain some morale as well uh, Hmm. I think I'll go on a recon mission actually first, just to see what's going on here. And then I'll select one of my units. So now you can see that all of the combat stats get compared against each other. And uh, don't fret, this is pretty common. Your units are much weaker in the, in the HD department against... Um, this faction right here. So even though you saw I took, just took a ridiculous amount of damage, that's all right. The the morale is really what's going to win the game for us. So we can use our battle solids to attack here. I can link more of my units to this target, or I can just do a bunch of damage, and or I could just uh, disorganize this unit and make it zero 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 for its turn. I think I'll do that. This is gonna be my first turn against it. 
And now you see, uh, I took 5 HP damage, but this unit has no stats left. And that's good because I believe a lot of my units are engaged to it. Now yeah, I just do a frontal assault. This will attack one flanking onto each engaged uh, enemy. That's what centaurs are. And this is important because the more flanking stacks I get onto a particular unit, I'll be able to use a, a salty position, which is weak by itself, but the more flanking uh, counters I get on it, the stronger this ability becomes. So this unit, um, all he's doing is using his morale ability to lower mor my morale, but um, Stellar Marines are good for gaining morale against the Libra Horde because they always, all of their tactics have like one morale, which is pretty dang useful. Okay, um, let's use this unit now. Actually, let's not use this unit yet. I thought that was another Stellar Marines. Could use this unit. I would take a bit of damage against these two. Uh, I guess one thing I could do is disorganize, spend a little clout. And in this campaign, I'm getting a crap ton of clout, so it doesn't really matter if I spend it. And yeah, look, a little bugs it out, but that's alright. Now what I'll do is I'll just launch a frontal assault again and add another stack to all of these units. But more importantly, also gain um, uh, gain a little damage as well too, besides these flank stacks. Every, everything's important, right? They all add up in the long run. Good news is we don't have too many people engaged to this Libra champion. Two, two units. Um... Let's see if, okay, now we probably can use a Stellar Marines on, or maybe this Combat Science. I don't have the best distribution, but I, I will be able to strike their flanks now. That's what mech suits are good against. They get two an attack per engaged, uh, per flanking charge, which is very, very useful. But because they use the charge counters, that means there's a turn where they're all zero, 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 which could be their, very, their, their last turn possible. Yeah, a lot of cases that is what might happen. So against the Libra Champion, you saw I had 3 attack and uh, he had 2 defense, so I need to roll a 1 out of 10 to be able to just insta-kill insta him. Uh, what do I want to do with the combat science now? Could add some decomposing damage, because I don't really need the shield this turn anymore. So every turn in the future, they'll take uh, two deco decomposition stacks, so in the future you'll just take two damage at the start of every turn. And you can see those are just added right now. Now against the Libra Champion, I'm just going to defend so we don't take any damage. And I'll hurt myself, but I'll gain one morale overall, and that's probably the best way to deal with him. I'll probably bug out and just disappear anyways. Now this unit, I don't know what he's doing, so I need to be a little careful with you. Uh, now use the assault the position. I have, it has two base morale, but with the flank counter, I'll have three morale, so I'll actually gain a morale from this engagement and do a little damage, of course, as well. And then you, I think I'll just hmm, I think I'll just hold the position. So I will lose a morale, but I won't take any damage. I think that's all right for the long run. And you can see one of the enemy units got routed because he had the least amount of HP and then it was also less than the morale. And yeah, so the Libra champion does bug unfortunately. But that will be something that uh, gets gets fits in the new, near future hopefully. But let's see who I want to target with this. Hmm. Now this unit's usually the easiest to kill but maybe I'll save you now your units do heal up at the end of um, each turret so I might just launch a frontal assault with one of my stellar marines just to reveal what tactics they're using and to add some flanking counters And yeah, I, I did take some small damage, but once again, I, I don't plan on losing anybody. I've killed this uh, Kaju now, but fortunately, I, uh, I, I still will lose some morale to him every time I attack him. Uh, these units don't die until the end of the turn. 
A little bit unfortunate, but nothing I can do about that. He will, he is engaged to four of my units, so that's basically four morale I'm losing for sure to him. Since he has uh, a five morale tactic, there's no way I'm going to be able to beat that. All right, but we should be able to gain some morale against these uh, horde bands for this one. This one, this one needs to die. But now that he has the flanking counters on him, it should be should be fine against these guys. All right, it doesn't really matter that if, if I lose a little bit of morale, anyways, because none of my units are at risk for getting routed. And when he dies, I'll gain three morale at the end, anyways. So, to him, I, I basically, I lost one morale overall for killing him, which is perfectly fine with me. We'll gain a little bit of morale with Assault the Position, since we have enough counters to make it worthwhile. Maybe not against this one, but definitely against that one. Alright, perfect. Uh, is there any more units I could get onto him? Not really. I think I'll just shield this guy up. Who who else is going to attack a bunch of people? Oh good, my missile recon will attack him. That's a perfectly fine thing for me to do. Uh, I think I'll just take two damage, but attack someone else. We'll figure out, we'll attack this guy last because this is an easy turn where I don't have to think too much with him. Who's going to get attacked a, a few times? Take a lot of damage. Hmm. Bow Salix are also engaged to him, so that, that doesn't matter that much either. Alright, I'll, I'll pick a tactic that just heals me up. Although, it doesn't really matter because they'll route pretty soon anyways. Uh, do I really care? I guess I could add more decomposition to him as well. Just to make sure this unit dies next turn. So it gets like invincibility once you use a bunch of your DLTs or your true damage to defeat them a bit easier. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just use my one flank stack against him. Especially since he doesn't have it. It doesn't have uh, much defense in comparison. Now we'll use our, we'll use um, this marine. I think I'll just hold the position. I don't really need to hurt it. I'll just not take too much damage and deal another morale worth of damage. Now those battle satellites I can use to just kill a unit. Just kill this one. Did I do damage to it? Or, may, or maybe because I was engaged to him, it countered my tactic. Hmm. Okay. There's a few mid-camps I'm still unsure about, so we'll have to figure it out uh, later. Maybe it doesn't work. Let, let's try again. Oh, no. See, it does do damage. Okay, there we go. Alright, we're around another unit, and then... This unit should die. There we go. Now we just have to kill these guys. I might take a few losses. Depends. Since there's so few enemy units now, some of my units on this edge aren't actually even engaged to them. Which is actually good, because I don't want my mech suits fighting. I don't want my missile recon fighting if I don't have to. In fact, some of my more vulnerable units I might even try to protect. Or place them on defensive formations. Hey, got to... Uh, Wait a little bit, setting up everything to make sure you have to click a little bit. But don't worry, just give it a sec. Uh, trust me, it will be all right in a bit. In fact, I'll probably uh, disorganize these guys just so I don't lose any units uh, once I'm able to do so. Just like I said, give it a sec. Um, but yeah, overall, I hope you are enjoying this game. 
Oh, there we go. Oh, it's okay. I just had to select my pal slides to make it turn. That's that's kind of embarrassing. I apologize for that. Just so I don't lose any units. I'm going to disorganize these people and then I can just attack whatever. Uh, we're going to pick the attacks that don't hurt me for obvious reasons. But um, I actually think the clout might... I mean, clout's pretty cheap too, but so are weapons in this stage of the game. This, this is like really end game for uh, this campaign. Just gain more morale. Perfect. <laughs> These guys weren't even up. Uh... Oh no, I don't want to lose you. Okay, okay. Oh no, I can't heal until he's activated, so I'm sorry, but you're going to die no matter what. That's a shame. That was a small little mistake. But whatever. Well, let's do a little damage and add some flanking uh, tokens to him. All right. Um. This there, this guy has enough decomposition. Well, I guess we could just heal somewhat. Heal one of these lower stellar marines. Yeah, let's attack once more. Then we'll just use the flanking maneuver for the last at attack to kill him. And then this guy should uh, route as well on the next turn. Alright. Or he didn't want to route yet. Let me just... Let me just kill him the old fashioned way. Let me just kill you the old fashioned way. Okay, one more turn. You're not linked, okay. I don't need to hurt myself, I'll just use my morale. Once I get to eight, he'll be dead. Or I guess I could assault a little. I assault once, maybe. To make sure he has. He lower. Uh, takes enough damage. Okay, that was a waste. I, he wasn't. Okay, I, just, just for the sake of this uh, tutorial, I'm just going to make sure he dies for sure. To keep this episode simple. All right, there we go, yay, we won. So now this planet is mine and uh, the Libra Horde is all the weaker. Anyways, I think that'll be it for the preview of this game. This game actually has a few more uh, complicated things such as you know going through the wormholes to make more awesome trade routes, uh, having four enemies uh, will definitely increase the difficulty, there's also these little training posts that move around the map randomly and then they can buy one thing and trading with these is actually a small victory objective to uh, gain some more free clout. Yeah, visit the Eldarian fleet three times to trade plus one tier of this little thing. But yeah, um, if you have some spare cash and you want to check out a very very unique Space 4X game, Apollo 4X is the name of the game you want, $20 on Steam. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed it, enjoyed this episode, feel free to leave a like. If you'd like to continue supporting this channel, please click that subscribe button. So thanks for watching guys, XRMBear signing out.